So I stop here. Right. Our next, our next uh, aspect is the continuation of that. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next page. Remember, this diagram here. I just want you to add somewhere at the top here. This is when the value of a is greater than zero. Okay, the value of the coefficient of x cubed is greater than zero. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Now you can also have a case where the, the value of a is less than zero. Okay, in that case, you can have something like this. Right? Now, this is when the value of A is less than zero. So take note of that. Right? So I have my two turning points. That's A, and call that one. Okay, so here F of B will be equal to 0, and here F of F prime of A will be equal to 0. Okay, and the function is going to be decreasing. To the right hand side of the maximum turning point, it will be decreasing, which means the first derivative will be less than z. Then between a and b, okay, so that is between the two turning points, it's gonna be a decrease, an increase in function, which means f prime of x will be greater than z. To the left of the minimum turning point is going to be a decrease in function. So the first derivative will be less than z. Okay. So it's very important before we before we start sketching the graphs for you to be aware of this. Okay, it's very important for you to be aware or of this. Right, let's move on to another aspect. Now remember I told you last week that sometimes a stationary point can also be a point of inflection. Remember that? Okay, we are going to talk about that just now. Right, let's move on to a new aspect that we have never done before, which is the point of inflection. Point of inflection. Point of inflection. Okay, please write this down. The point of the point of inflection of a graph of a function of a graph of a cubic function. The point of inflection. The point of inflection of the graph of a cubic function. The point of inflection of the graph of a cubic function. The point of inflection of the graph of a cubic function is the point. Is the point. Is the point at which is the point at which the concavity changes. Okay, this is the spelling for concavity. Concavity. Okay, the point of inflection of the graph of a cubic function is the point at which the concavity of the graph 
changes. Full stop. A cubic graph, a cubic graph can change. A cubic graph can change from being concave up to concave down. A cubic graph can change from being concave up to concave down. Or concave down to concave up. A cubic graph can change from being concave up concave down, or concave down to concave up, full stop. At the point of inflection, at the point of inflection, at the point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to zero. At the point of inflection, the second the derivative is equal to zero. So in brackets, write this, f double prime of x is equal to 0. At the point of inflection, the second derivative is equal to 0. In brackets, f the double prime of x is equal to 0. Okay, then you put a full stop. Let's just draw the sketches. Let's start with when a is greater than 0. my point of inflection. Okay, the value of a at that point is equal to a. Okay, the value of what of x at that point is equal to a. Alright, I want you to be aware of this. This is very, very important. Okay, the concept of the point of inflection is very important when you are analyzing and interpreting cubic graphs. To the left of the point of inflection, uh, let me label it here. Let's write here point. Point of inflection. You can also call it the inflection point. Okay. To the left of that point of inflection, the graph is said to be concave down. To the left, if there's a maximum turning point to the left of the inflection point, then we say the graph is concave down. So, it is concave down. So, it's concave down. Right. Now, when it's concave down, Okay, if you want, you can call it the set face. Okay, if you connect with your knowledge of the quadratic function, you can say the graph is set. Okay, because it's changing from being maximum to what? Towards being a minimum. So the graph is set. Okay, and then here, to the right of this, of, of this value of x, the graph is said to be concave up. Okay? 
So it's concave up. It's concave up, which means it's happy. Okay. It's happy, so you have like a happy face. If you start from the okay, what? A happy face. Okay? Now I'm going to add some inequalities that are very important. Okay, some inequalities that, that you need to know because sometimes you can be asked to determine the values of x, okay, such that the, the graph is concave up or concave down. So when it's concave down, okay, I'm going to explain further where I get this from. Okay. Most textbooks they don't explain where it comes from, but I'm going to, to tell you in more detail. The, the second derivative in that interval must be less than zero. Do you think I should use another color for this? Maybe. I think I need to use another color. Uh, probably that one. Okay. Let me use another color. Remember, it's a happy here. So let me use that one. Hopefully, you will see. So, the graph here is such that the second derivative will be less than z. So if you get a question asking you for what value of x is the graph concave down, find the second derivative. Okay? Find the second derivative in. Remember, the second derivative of a quadratic function is a linear. So where there is f double prime of x here, you put a linear function, and then you end up getting a linear inequality, which is a grade 10 inequality. And then you solve. Okay, very easy. And then here it will be f double prime of x is greater than zero. So if you get a question asking you to find values of x such that the graph is concave out, find your second derivative, okay, replace it, uh, sorry, uh, replace the f double prime of x with that second derivative, which will be in terms of x. And then you solve the inequality. And then you have to that. Usually it's three marks to do a question like that, which is which I call easy marks. Okay. Right? So this is the, the case when you have uh, the constant A being positive. Any question? Uh, if you don't have a question, then let's move on to the next one. Now we are dealing with, with A that's less than zero. This time the x value I'm gonna call it c. Okay, remember it's my choice. Remember that it's my choice. So I decided to make the value of x as a point of inflection equal to c. Okay. Please uh, uh, just allow me to to abbreviate the point of inflection as p p o i. Okay. Point of what? Inflection. So, to the left of C, the graph is concave up. Okay? So, it's concave up, which means, in this case, means the second derivative the second derivative is going to be greater than zero. In my case, I've got a way of memorizing it, but also due to experience, I've managed to just know it, just like that. Okay? But I've got a way of, of memorizing it with this inequality. I'll also tell you another way of getting that later. Then, in this interval, the graph is concave down. Ok, 
Okay, so you want to find the values of x for which the graph is concave down. Just find the second derivative, okay, by using rules, and then you solve that inequality. And then you are done. Okay, and remember at the turning point, the first derivative is equal to 0. The second the derivative does not exist there. Okay, all right. I think when it comes to the point of inflection, uh, for now I'll stop there. But I'm going to talk now about this. It's a stationary point which can be a point of inflection. Any question? Right, if you don't have any question, then I want you to write this down in your, in your book. Sometimes, Sometimes a cubic graph can have sometimes a cubic graph can have one stationary point sometimes a cubic graph can have one stationary point which will also be the point of inflection sometimes a cubic graph can also have a stationary, sorry, one stationary point, which will also be the point of inflection. If you have a case like that, then you are going to have the following scenario. Point which is also. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want to ask a question? Yes. Yes. So, what is the second derivative? The second derivative is the first derivative of, of the first derivative. <laughs> okay. Right. It's like this. What I think is all this thing. Can I have your attention? Can I have your attention? The first derivative of this function is x, sorry, it will be 3x squared plus 2. Okay, we can also find a derivative of this first derivative. Then that derivative will be what? A second derivative. So that's 6x. So the second derivative is the first derivative of the first derivative. Okay. Alright, so here, to the right of this point, I'm going to call it B. The graph is concave up, which means f double prime of x will be what? Greater than z. And then here, the graph is concave down. So the second derivative will be less than zero. Now, this point here. Stationary point. It's a stationary point, which is also which is also a point of inflection. A 
Okay. So at that point there, this is very interesting. At that point, your first derivative will be equal to the second derivative and both will be equal to zero. If a stationary point is a point of inflection, then you are going to have a scenario like that. Okay, for this question, it means f prime of b will equal to f double prime of b and both must be zero. Right. Now, when you go home, we'll do the, the second case when, uh, when A is less than B. Okay. So let me stop here. In our next lesson, we'll start sketching graphs. Okay, so please make sure you go over all the stuff that we have been doing so far. And then when we start sketching, I'll introduce the second derivative.